How are you? Oh, man, I'm great. Thanks for having me. Nice to see you. Good to see you. Are you home for the holidays? Is that why you're home? Yeah, but also here to talk to you, man. Oh, Come is that on. the reason you came? That's so nice That's of part you. of it. <laughs> <laughs> you said, Mom, I'm going to be able to make it home this year, but only if I could do an interview on public radio. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> exactly. What do you guys do with the holidays? What's the... Um, just a lot of family time, you know. We uh, you know, we're not too big on gifts. I think the gift of time with family is like the biggest, the biggest thing for us. Especially because you might, you must not see them too often anymore. We don't, we don't. It's kind of rough nowadays being so nomadic, but um, it's good to be home, man. You know, on the way in, we were talking about how we both sort of remembered that we had spoken before about your yeah. old TV show, mm-hmm. um, and I think I had congratulated you on a Canadian Screen Award for Race. Yeah. Um, now I congratulate you on your first Golden Globe nomination. Yeah, thank you, man. How does that feel? Incredible and weird. Um, you know, like now people like call me Golden Globe nominee Stefan James. It's like it's like a part of my my real name now. So mm-hmm. it's, it's kind of cool. I ho- I hope you insist that your friends call you that too. Yeah, it's yeah. just it's in my rider. Everyone, <laughs> <laughs> everyone has. But then, where, where do you find that out? Does someone call you or? Um, yeah, it's it's crazy. I got a, I was in my hotel room in Los Angeles and. Um, I got a call the morning of the nominations that woke me up out of my sleep, like at an ungodly hour, like 5 a.m. And, uh, you know, I woke up to my publicist, like screaming to the top of her lungs <laughs> that I had been nominated. I couldn't really make it out in the first few seconds, but, you know, it took me a while to put two and two together. And, and you know, I just had a minute to, to take it all in. That's uh, something very meaningful about that. And I think it's especially meaningful. You dedicated your nomination to Scarborough. Yeah. Always, always, man. Scarborough means so much to me. I wear it on my back pretty much everywhere I go. Well, we're going to talk a little bit more about that. But first, you got the Golden Globe for the TV drama Homecoming. Uh, you're here, though, to talk about uh, If Beale Street Could Talk, the new film from Barry Jenkins, who, who made Moonlight. It's based on a novel by the great James Baldwin. You play Fawny, uh, this young man, this artist who's been falsely accused of rape, is in prison awaiting trial. Uh, what What is it that brought you to this character, brought you to this story? <sighs> I mean, for one... Um, Barry Jenkins, mm-hmm. you know, uh, I've been a big fan of Barry for a long, long time. Um, and then obviously James Baldwin, the first time that James Baldwin is being adapted ever, you know, to have an opportunity to, to bathe in that man's language and be a part of such an iconic piece of literature, you know, that, that really struck me as something that was important. Well, tell me a little bit about the research you did, because I heard that even though this film is set in the 1970s, you were looking towards real world stories for some inspiration. Yeah, yeah. Actually, my biggest source of inspiration for this character was a young man by the name of Khalif Browder, who in New York City in 2010 was charged with petty theft of a backpack, a crime that he didn't commit. Mm. And he was sent away to Rikers Island for three years, two and a half of which he spent in solitary confinement, Mm. you know, as a 16-year-old boy. And this story really, really, really hit home to me because I didn't have to dig back to the 1960s or 1970s to find an example of this. I only had to look back to 2010. Mm -hmm. And quite frankly, I probably could have looked back to like a couple of weeks ago to find someone to, to base this character off of. But ultimately, it was... You know, me feeling like these stories aren't told enough. You know, they're not told enough in film. They're not told enough in in documentaries. And this allows us to sort of bring a voice to the voiceless, bring a level of humanity to these guys who often get written off as statistics. I know exactly what you mean. When I was watching um, If Beale Street Could Talk, again, it was set in the 1970s in New York, but I was forgetting all the time. Yeah. Like there were moments... I would be. I would see an old car, and I'd be rem- reminded. Oh wait, this isn't now. Right, right. I think that's the the beauty and and maybe the unfortunate, you know, timelessness of Baldwin. That that those words that he wrote in 1974 they resonate so heavily today. Including as a Canadian uh, telling a story about America. Yeah, yeah. Of course. I mean, you know, to me, I think that I, first of all, I'm an actor, so I, you know, I got to do my job and do my research. But you know, a lot of these problems are are you know. Canadians aren't, um, you know, they're not different from from this, and the experience is not different. So, um, you know, I wish I could say that that I had a, a totally different perspective, but a lot of these things are familiar to me as well. So, growing up in Scarborough, I read this that a lot, not, not a lot of the reason you're an actor, but some of the reason you're an actor is because your mom used to give you VHS tapes. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, we had the biggest like VHS collection ever like on the planet like hundreds of vhs's and we me and my brothers used to just watch movies all day long like what what, what was she giving you um you know lion king mm-hmm. <laughs> like the fun stuff but it was always something for us to i think you know 
honestly, looking back on it, I think it was a way for her to keep us in the house. Right, right. Um, but honestly, I just had so much time and so many memories from taking in like cinema with my brothers. So is it is it a, is, is it a situation where you're watching television and you go like, oh, I I can do that. I want to do that. Um, I don't know that I ever had that right. thought. I think I just sort of like took baby steps, put one foot in front of the other. Mm-hmm. You know, I started doing theater in high school and was like, hmm, I wonder what film and television would be like. And then I got myself a manager, mm-hmm. and then it's kind of like, okay, I guess I'll audition and see if I if I get stuff. And then I started to get stuff, and and you know, sort of just stacked one thing on top of the other, and, and here I am. Well, let me know if I'm getting too heady here, because I'm just I'm a musician. I have no acting experience whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, but I'm, I'm always so curious about what motivates someone to want to inhabit somebody else, like mm-hmm. wants to inhabit someone else's story. Um, well, I mean, sometimes it, it's it's an escape. You know, it's a it's a form of expression. Um, an you escape know, for who? An escape for you? Yeah, for 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 the artist. I think you know, being someone outside of yourself. It's it's. Um, you know, it's an interesting sort of feeling. And then, you know, sometimes it feels important. It feels necessary. Um, you know, for instance, with this character, it just felt like it was bigger than me. You know, I felt like this story needed to be told because, yeah. you know, no nobody gets to see, you know, these stories get told. No one gets to give these characters a voice and give them a level of humanity. And and so to me, there's that responsibility. It's like fulfilling my, my duty and my purpose as, a, as an artist. If you're just tuning in, I'm speaking with Stefan James about the new Barry Jenkins film. If Beale Street Could Talk, Barry Jenkins' next project after his film Moonlight, which won the Best Picture Academy Award in 2017. And I heard you were telling people, I'm going to work with Barry Jenkins one day. Yeah. Before you got the role. Yeah. Is that right? I mean, it sounds crazy, but I kind of, you know, I really believe in the, like, speaking things into fruition and into existence. So you, you, if you say it out loud, it'll come to you. Yeah, I would yeah. tell everybody, like all my friends, they'd be like, oh, I'm going to make a movie with Barry Jenkins. And i um, not sure when it's going to be, but it's going to happen. And, um, you know, I honestly didn't expect for it to be this soon, for it to be literally his follow-up to, you know, Best Picture Moonlight. Um, but so grateful that this was it. So... I'm, I'm always so nervous about this because sometimes I have I have folks in on the show and I'm a huge fan of their work. I'm not going to say any names, but then you meet them and yeah. you go, oh God. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm not. I'm, I'm not going to. I'm not going to make you say anybody's name, but I, yeah. I know you've also had that experience. We know. We know. We've met people. Yeah. You know, <laughs> bare naked ladies. No, I'm only joking. It's not. They're very very nice. But I love you, the bare naked ladies. Me too. <laughs> but you meet you meet people and you're kind of like, oh come on. And yeah. now you can I can't even watch your movies anymore. Right. Right. So how did the actual experience of working with Barry Jenkins match up to the expectation of working with Barry Jenkins? Wow, I think it it may have exceeded it. Is that so? Yeah. He's a... Uh you know, Barry Jenkins is a special, special filmmaker. He has an incredible eye for storytelling. Um, he's remarkably patient. I, I don't think I've ever met a director who's as patient as he is. And, you know, and honestly, surprisingly very relaxed. You know, he has this thing about him where... You know, he's just able to keep everybody in a really chilled, relaxed environment, um, you know, keep an intimate space, feeling comfortable. So, so it's, you know, it's a healthy space for the actors to be vulnerable, to try things, to fail, mm. to look silly. Mm. And, you know, he sort of embraces all that and allows you time and space to find yourself within these characters, which is something I really appreciate. And what a, what a, what a, what a challenging role it is to work in his films because, and I know people haven't seen it yet, so they, but, but when they see it, they'll, they'll get an idea. Mm. It's such a quiet film. Yeah. There are long stretches with no dialogue or just one piece of dialogue. That's yeah. that's an acting, I don't even know, like an Olympics of acting. Yeah, I mean, and that's a big credit to Barry that he sort of allowed those moments to live. Like, he, he doesn't rush anything as a director. I think that you, it allows the audience to experience things in real time and to, to feel like they're a part of the story in a way. But I, I love that you didn't feel like you were over your head at all. I love that you went in and, you know, like there's, it can be scary to work with one of your heroes. Yeah, I mean, a little daunting. I'm not going to act, you know, like I just walked in all nonchalant. You know, it is James Baldwin and it's Barry Jenkins and you want to be able to to do both of those legacies, you know, justice. But um, it's a big, big credit to Barry and, and, and the environment he created for us. Yeah, and you know what they they say that like when it's when what does Oprah say when preparation meets opportunity? Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it is. Exactly. Uh, I also heard that I'm quoting Oprah here this morning. By the way, uh-huh. I'm making fun of bare naked ladies and quoting Oprah here on the <laughs> CBC. <laughs> I heard that Barry Jenkins let you take off for a little while 
to do the chemistry test with Julia Roberts for, for, for homecoming. Is that right? Yeah, this is okay. So this is crazy. So I was already filming Beale Street in, yeah. in New York um, last fall. And, um, and, you know, I had this, this chemistry read uh, for homecoming with Julia. So that's that thing where you, you get together with Julia and figure out whether you can work together. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh, and so I had like maybe 14, 15 pages of dialogue. And if you don't know, that's a lot of dialogue. A lot, a lot of dialogue. And so I was just caught up in in all these words, you know, while filming Bill Street. And Barry Jenkins was nice enough to let me go to Los Angeles and, and have a chemistry read with, with Julia. I, I, do you ever have these moments where you're, I can't believe I'm here, like working with Julia Roberts, working with Barry Jenkins? Well, that's pretty much every day, I think. You know, um, every day is a pinch me moment. Um, you know, I worked with Julia every day for like 12 hours a day for maybe six or seven months. Mm-hmm. And you still don't get used to that. You still don't get used to that. You know, every day it was just like a joy to like sit across from one of the the greatest actresses of all time and to be able to pick up gems and, and, and learn and laugh and love. And, and she's just, you know, aside from the incredible actress she is, she's just an incredible human being. And, but in addition to all the success you've been having with the roles you've been taking on yourself, you're also really focused on creating opportunities for black actors and filmmakers yeah. in Toronto and Canada. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me more about that. Yeah. Um, you know, I think the legacy of, of black cinema, um, especially in, in Canada, has been something that's really important to me. It's always been important to me and my brother, Shamir Anderson, who's also an actor. Mm-hmm. And so three years ago, we started an initiative called The Black Ball. Um, which is a celebration every year during TIFF, basically honoring black filmmakers and, and the work they've done for the year. And, um, you know, this year, actually, this past September, was the first year that Cameron Bailey and TIFF partnered with us um, to put on the event. So it's just something really, really special. I'm just proud of, of how far it's come so far. How do you think we're doing here in Canada? Um, you know, it's interesting. I think that there's still a lot of work to be done. I think there's still a lot of work to be done. But, you know, I'm happy to, to sort of help pioneer and steer that. Um, you know, there's a lot of incredible young actors who are coming out of this city. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you look at Mina Masood, who just did um, Aladdin, the Aladdin remake with Will Smith. You look at Lamar Johnson, who just did um, Hate You Give. He's doing incredible, incredible work. And my brother, Shamir Anderson, just did Destroyer with Nicole Kidman and is on Goliath now. It's just like... I feel like this is a, 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 a melting pot for just extreme artistry, especially in the in the world of cinema. And it's time to embrace that. And, and I'm so happy we can be a part of inspiring a whole new generation of artists. You are going to be a big part of inspiring a lot of young actors, like, you know, 20, 30 years from now. I hope so. When, when you and I are, you know, in the old folks' home playing shuffleboard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sipping tea. Yeah, sip, sipping tea like we're doing right now. Um, uh, I'm sure people are going to be coming in saying, you know, I, I, I figured out I could do this because it's Fawn James, I'm sure they are. Yeah, I hope so, man. Um, I, I, I'm always reluctant when I look at an actor's catalog or an actor's, uh, what do they call that? It's a discography, filmography, mm-hmm. in discography of music. Uh, filmography to make too many assumptions. Because I know that roles take a long time. There's a lot of things that go into taking on roles. But when, when I look at a, a couple of these, you know, when I look at roles in Selma, yeah. when I look as, as Jesse Owens in Race, I look at this uh, James Baldwin adaptation now, among many others, you know... Am I right to make an assumption here about why you choose the roles that you choose? Well, what's the assumption? Well, that you might prefer roles or you, you, see, you see acting not just as acting, but as an opportunity to tell stories that are important. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think that's fair. Um, you know, I'm a big believer in art that reflects life, art that reflects society, um, and ultimately, you know, just having a higher purpose. You know, we don't own the art. We're, custo- we're custodians of the art. We got to we, we gotta take care of it. And and so it's my job to, to bring stories like this to light. You know, I don't claim to be an activist or a politician or anything like that. But um, I think that if this is my way of, of speaking and, and, and right, raising discussion and helping people, um, you know, talk about some of the issues that are so potent in, in the country today, in the world today, then, you know, I'm happy to, to be a part of that. Though I hear you also want to be Spider-Man. I would love to be Spider-Man. We should make some calls and try and get it done. You know what we should do? Because you said, you know, I, I don't like to believe that if I say things out loud, mm-hmm. we should just talk as if you're already, is that how it works? Like to say. Yeah, just, I mean, just call me Peter. So we have Peter Parker over here. I don't know if you know this about <laughs> Stefan James, but he's going to be in the new Spider-Man. I don't know if you know about that. Oh, man, that's awesome. You, I love this. Universe. 
Yeah. You can be in the CBC radio production of Spider Man. Hey, if you man, want. I'm happy to do it. Happy to do it. <laughs> Bay, not great. It's okay. It's all good. That's all right, Stefan. But you get to meet bare naked ladies. <laughs> I love it. I'll take it. Stefan James, nice to meet you. Good to meet you, man. Thank, thanks for coming in. Thank you. This was fun.